Uh, good morning, Chan. I'm, I'm sure you're going to get a ton of Tua questions, so I want to get in one first about uh, the previous quarterback, Ryan. Um, obviously, you guys are as close as you can be. Um, a, what are your emotions now knowing the news that, that you've had to help deliver? And B, how is Fitz handling it? Uh, well, you need to talk to Fitz to, to talk about that, uh, to, to get that answered. Uh, he's, he's the best one to do that. And uh, yeah, I'm close with Fitz, but guess what? I like Tua. I like Tua a lot. And I, I think he's got a great future. So um, I, I'm excited uh, for him. Uh, you know, we, we do what's best for the football team all the time. That's what we try to do. And um, so uh, that's, uh, that's our, where we are with this thing right now. Armando? Chan, uh, so everyone knows that the starting quarterback gets the vast, vast majority of reps in practice with the first team. Um, what, was there a point before he was named starter that Tua cut into that number, got more reps than normal as the backup? And when was that, if you could be so No, uh, we, we, we gave him the, the same number of reps uh, most, most every week. Joe. Good morning, Channing. Uh, Chan, good to see you. Is it Channing on the birth certificate? It is not. All right, Chan. My, my, Chandler. It's Chandler. Uh, my apologies, Chan. I wanted right. to... I've been called worse. <laughs> what, what are some of the benefits of having RPO available uh, as an option, as a play? And how, how does that align with uh, with two strengths, the quick passing game elements. Well, he he did uh, a decent amount of that in college, and um, well, there's different types of RPOs. There's uh, pre-snap RPOs. There's post-snap RPOs, um, and uh, we use you know some of both, but mostly pre-snap RPOs is what we uh, have done, and um, uh, he's. Uh, what I remember him doing in college was he, he was good at reading and seeing that. And uh, as time goes on, um, we, we can adjust and maybe use a few more of those uh, to fit into what he has done in the past. Soffit. Good morning, coach. How are you? <clears throat> um, you know, obviously, uh, coaching Fitzpatrick again was a big reason why uh, you joined the team here. Um, you know, if the, if the organization decided that maybe trading away Ryan Fitzpatrick was a move they wanted to make at the trade deadline, you know, how would you kind of take that in and, and how do you think he would probably respond to that? Look, I, I can't speculate on that. I have no idea. Uh, I, I like him. I love having him here. I'd hate to see him go and, but somebody would step in. I mean, that's, that's the way this business is. We, we do what we think is best for the football team in every decision, whether it's, you know, who's here, who's not here, who's playing, who's not playing, uh, who's backing up, who's a, who's a practice squad guy, who's not a practice squad guy. You, you, you make the decisions you feel like are best for the football team all the time. That's what we do. How? Hello, Chan. I wanted to ask you about the uh, left-handed side of things. Um, when you go to a left-handed quarterback, which is, as you know, very rare these days in the NFL, what changes for you as an offensive coordinator? And uh, what changes have you noticed perhaps for a defense trying to uh, contain a lefty at quarterback? Um, you know, I would think that if somebody, uh, the number one thing I would think about that if somebody's trying to make um, a right-handed quarterback scramble, they would want him to scramble to the left. They probably have to change that thought process to make a left-handed quarterback scramble to his right. That would be uh, one of the first things I would think about. And for us, uh, we practice things both left and right. So um, it, it doesn't change a lot for us. Um, you know, when if we've had a bootleg that's been to the right for uh, fits, 
then it's been on Tua's wristband every week that he runs it to the left. So we practiced it all both ways. So nothing really changes for us. Omar. Shan, I wanted to ask you about uh, Tua's Tuesday meetings. I don't know with Flores is what he said, but I don't know if you're also involved in that. Um, when you do have meetings with Tua and go over film, what, what are those conversations like and what are you watching? Are you watching games of Fitz playing or Tua in practice? Uh, well, most of the time you're watching the team we're playing that week. Uh, we're talking about what, how we're going to defeat them. Right now, we're only talking about the Rams. That's all we're talking about. We're not talking about anything else. Um, we're, we're trying to get ready to defeat them and defeat what they do and take advantage of our personnel uh, against them and see how we match up. Those are the things that we're working on, and that's all we work on. Travis? Hey, Coach, on that topic of the Rams, we saw Aaron Donald on TV last night doing what he does every single week. What's the best way to get that guy blocked, and how does he kind of adjust your offensive game plan? Well, uh, I, somebody made a statement. You, a lot of people want to know where a safety is or where a linebacker is. You, you want to know where he is. Is he lining up on the left or the right? Is he lining up in a, on the tackle or on the guard? Uh, you know, he, he, you want to know where he is, and you want to – scheme some things um, to help out whoever's got him. At the same time, you can't um, change everything you're doing. Uh, you got to depend on our good players playing well against him too. And we, we got to depend on that a little bit. Steve? Shan, I know coaches try to anticipate every possible situation. I'm wondering over the course of your career, how much time you have spent on uh, not scoring when the other team is trying to let you score and how much that has even been on your radar? Uh, we've talked about it. It's not like uh, it's uh, uh, something that you uh, consider uh, on a daily basis, but we've talked about it and um, we, we try to educate our players into the situation that's at hand um, and then at the same time, you can negate that if you want to and just take a knee. All right, we got time for one more. We'll go to Joe. I guess kind of a basic question. How do you think Tua will do? You're cutting out on me. I can't hear you. How, how do you think Tua will do? How do I think he'll do? Did you ask that? Is that what you asked? Can y'all hear him? Can anybody else not hear him? I can't. Yeah, we can't hear him either, Coach. How do you think he'll do? I think he'll play great. I mean, that, that's what you anticipate. You anticipate him going out there and seeing the defense and knowing where to throw the football and making good throws and making good decisions uh, in, in the run game as far as getting us uh, where we're supposed to get blocking-wise. Uh, I expect him to play excellent. Uh, but – that's the way I feel about every week going into every game. You think you're going to play great. You're disappointed when you don't score every time. Josh, uh, Jerome Baker has mentioned that two has asked defensive players questions about coverages and different sorts of things over the last few months. Has he done that with you at all? Has he either called you aside to talk about defensive looks or has he gone into any of your meetings with your defensive players? I think it's with like all young players, uh, not exclusive to Tua. There's a lot of guys on the other side of the ball that are always asking you, hey, what are you guys trying to do to this? Or, you know, what are your opinions or thoughts on this? And I, I think that's uh, a good, healthy thing, you know, and hopefully, uh, you know, our defensive players do the same to uh, Chan and the offensive coaching staff, you know, ask them, you know, ways that they're going to get attacked. So, yeah, those, those conversations happen from time to time. Stop it. Hey, Coach, there was a sequence in the Rams game last night where they were going tempo and then they slowed it down all the way at the think inside the 10 and then five seconds left on the play clock. They ran to the line, ran the play, scored a touchdown. You know, how cognizant are you of, you know, that kind of tempo and, 
and timing, um, you know, for the Rams offense that, that, that they could, um, you know, play with against you guys next week? Well, I would say Coach McVay does a tremendous job using tempo. Um, and they use it in numerous different ways. Uh, it doesn't always show up at the, uh, you know, you don't know exactly when it's coming. Uh, you have to be ready for it on every snap. Um, they, they, you know, they got a good skill group. They got a good offensive line and, and they, they mesh well together as a group and a unit. And, you know, and they're really, really good at changing it up on you. And not just with the tempo of the pace that they're doing. It's the same thing. They change the cadence. Um, so, you know, they get a lot of guys on hard counts. Um, they, they do a very, very good job. They put a lot of pressure on the defense. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have to do a great job this week of our communication uh, to make sure that the calls are in. Guys know what we're doing, getting lined up quickly and being ready to go and handling if the ball snapped quick or if they come out, survey what we're in, change their call and go. So, yeah, there's a lot of multiples this week. Uh, Coach McVay does a tremendous job with that, has for years, uh, and he puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Adam? I wanted to ask you about pre-snap motion. Um, the, the Patriots obviously use it to great success in the opener. The Rams use it in different ways, but they still use a ton of it. Um, how confident are you that you guys have a better better handle on, on pre-snap motion than he did in the opener? Well, I, I would say, you know, each week's unique uh, to what to what the offense is trying to do. Um, so, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll go out there and we'll work, we'll prepare, uh, you know, for the things that we've seen and some things that, you know, that are unseen. Uh, we'll prepare and, and, you know, try to be ready for that as, as best as we can on Sunday. Travis? Hey, Coach, good morning. Uh, yesterday I had a chance to talk to Coach Flores about – the way Bobby McCain nurtures relationships and how important it is to him. I just wanted to get your take on what you've seen as far as the way Bobby McCain kind of interacts with his teammates and the way he, he cultivates those relationships. I, I would say Bob, Bobby, number one, is a great communicator. Um, and he has a unique ability to get along with all types of personalities. And, um, you know, which in turn helps him on the field to handle you know, uh, multiple communications with uh, different individuals. So Bobby has been everything that you could want in a communicator. He really quarterbacks our defense. Um, so, um, you know, and, and he continues to work hard at that. So, and he's a really diligent worker and that's just part of his game and part of what, uh, you know, it, it, we've really benefited from Bobby being able to, one, nurture those relationships, and two, be able to handle communications to numerous individuals. Steve? Josh, how much do you uh, work on letting the other team score? <laughs> um, it's a situation. Um, it's only come up once in my career. Um, it's not a situation that you really want to be in from a defensive perspective. Um, Sometimes, I mean, obviously it's a last resort to give you a chance to win the game. It's not really something that uh, you want to find yourself in, but there are situations that call for um, the percentages and best odds uh, to give your team a chance to win the game, which ultimately is, is what we're all trying to do. Omar? I want to ask about the uh, injuries that you guys are facing right now at the linebacker unit um, with Kyle Van Noy, Andrew Van Ginkle, um, Greer, Greer Hill. I, I'm not even sure how to say his first name. Um, I want to put Kamu. 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 Um, how do you compensate for that? I know you're probably hoping to get a lot of them back, but how do you compensate for that? And can you talk a little bit about Sam and how he performed last time? I believe it was 49 snaps. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, the, the thing that we ask all of our guys to do, uh, whether they're slated to play a lot or they're slated to back up, is we ask all of our guys to prepare to play a 60-minute football game and to play every snap. And it doesn't matter whether you're a starter or you're not. I mean, you could be a play away from playing a lot. And I think it was really a credit to Sam, who, like again, like I said about a lot of our guys, he comes in puts in a great day's work. Um, he prepares, he prepares to play at multiple spots 
And, um, you know, and then when his numbers was called, you know, he made the most of his opportunities and brought some energy to the field. Uh, I thought he did a good job for us, helped us. Um, but we, we asked really all of our players um, whether they're slated as, hey, you're going to be in this group, this group, this group, or you're a backup in all these groups. All of them need to prepare like they're going to play a 60-minute game. And that, that's the way we kind of approach it. All right, got time for one more. We'll go to Hal. Josh, I, I'd like you to play a pretend game for just a second with me. If Jared Goff were a left-handed quarterback, how would that change your week? Uh, that, Hal, that's a good question. Um, um, you know, I, I've been so used to seeing Jared Goff as a right-handed quarterback, and that, that's where all my focus, time, and energy has been. I haven't really thought if he was left-handed. Um, I would say, you know, right-handed, left-handed. I mean, you're looking for the same things. You're looking for what teams do offensively. Uh, you're looking, um, you know, if they have tendencies, uh, the way that they try to attack defenses. Um, you know, you're going to look at targets, you know, areas where they throw on the field. There's a lot of things that go into uh, just scouting a particular team. Um, you know, I mean, each week we go into as, you know, has this receiver ever thrown a ball? Did he throw a ball in college? I mean, there's a lot of digging that goes into scouting. So right-handed, left-handed, you know, I, I, I'm not so sure how much of that matters. It's more what plays are they trying to do and how do they execute it and how are they try, trying to attack you? Good morning, Danny. The, um, you know, last time we talked and met, we, we asked you about Jakeem Grant and, uh, I just wanted to, to re-loop re to that, you know. Now it's been a, a couple of weeks since that uh, performance, but what do you think, again, a really electric, I mean, his best returning game of the season, what can that do for him moving forward these last 10 games? Well, I, I think anytime you have success, it builds confidence. Uh, I mean, as we all know, confidence is a strange thing, but most importantly, confidence comes from from production and playing well. So. Um, hopefully that gives him and, and, and really the whole group um, a little bit more confidence going forward. Topic. Hey, Coach, good morning. I was watching the Monday night game last night, and it seems like the Rams punter has this different way of holding the ball, the watermelon. I think that's what they called it on the, on the, on the telecast. Um, can you give some more insight in that? What, what, what is it about that uh, specific, the way you hold it and punt it and the way it bounces that, that kind of gives an advantage? Well, I, I think the biggest thing, as you said, is, is as the ball hits, when you, when you hit that lateral ball, uh, it's more inclined to bounce laterally as opposed to bouncing forward. You know, most of the time you see guys hitting the ball um, either end over end or from a spiral and where it's coming down with the nose first where, you know, what he's trying to do with that ball is hit it where it's hitting on the belly to get more of a lateral bounce, even if it does hit on one of the tips. So, uh, uh, you know, Johnny's a heck of a player, been a great player in this league for a long time, you know, really does an outstanding job. And uh, I think he hit the nail on the head, really did a great job of controlling field position for them last evening. Go back to Safed. Yeah, uh, about the field position, that was my probably the next follow-up is, uh, do you try to catch that as soon as that punt is coming? Or, or how do you um, kind of defend against a punter who, who has a really good knack of, of flipping the field? Well, I, I think, again, every one of those kicks is, is different. When you talk about flipping the field, you know, you're, you're getting a different type of ball as opposed to those, you know, what we refer to as plus 50 balls. But uh, I think anytime you have the ball on the ground, you're at the mercy. So, uh, you know, again, anytime you can field the ball cleanly, uh, it's going to help you. Travis? Hey, Coach, I just wanted to ask you about Kayvon Frazier and what he's meant to your special teams units, being a guy that, you know, plays on all four of the, of the coverage and kick units. Uh, done a really nice job. Was a, was a good pickup for us. Uh, has good experience, has a lot of position flexibility, and has really been a good addition for us. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys that's really selling in on one of those four phase core players for us. And, uh, you know, and those guys need to play well, and we need to keep playing better and better as the season progresses. I right, will go final question to Josh. Yeah, Danny, just following up on uh, Travis's question about another specific player. We've talked about him before, but but Matt Collins, could you speak on just the attitude he brings to the room, uh, knowing his, his reps offensively are limited, but he's playing a pretty big role for you at that gunner spot? 
yeah, doing a good job really on, uh, on, on each of the phases, you know, another guy that plays on all four for us. I think the biggest thing is, is, you know, Max got a great personality that, you know, his, uh, upbeat personality really transcends and really brings a lot of guys along uh, when you look at him in the locker room in the meeting room out on the practice field has really got a great demeanor and his approach of how he works and I think that has a a lasting impact on a lot of the younger guys.